Incendio. Hey guys, we're here at my apartment and as it's a frigid 30 something degrees outside, I thought it might be a good idea to make myself some hot butterbeer. That's right, I said hot. Now for those of you who have been to Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you'll know they have the chilled butterbeer and the frozen butterbeer. But for those of us Potterheads who have read the books, they clearly say butterbeer is supposed to warm your insides. Now the chilled buzzer butterbeer may have been good during the sweltering heat of the summer, but in this freezing cold weather, I thought it'd be nice to share a recipe with you guys for warm butterbeer. So we start out with boiling a liter of cream soda. I know that sounds a little weird, but it turns out good. You can either buy a liter of cream soda or three bottles equals cream, a liter of cream soda. I like to use the bottles because I find these cool labels on Google and then you can cut them up and print them out and use them like this. That's what we did for my Harry Potter party for the premiere of Deathly Hollows. So you boil it and then while that's boiling, you melt a half a stick of butter and we've got two to three tablespoons of brown sugar. It looks like I decided to do a little bit more than that because let's face it, brown sugar is delicious. So while the cream soda boils and the butter melts, we're gonna get some of the other ingredients ready. We'll be right back. All right, now you have to make sure your cream soda is actually boiling quite profusely because otherwise the butter and brown sugar will solidify. So once the butter and brown sugar has melted, you're gonna pour it into the boiling cream soda. And recipes like this and other Harry Potter recipes, you can just find on Harry Potter fan sites like MuggleNet or Leaky Cauldron, the leakycauldron.org. You can find this all on the attractions website. So we put the brown sugar and the melted butter in there, and then we're going to add the cream. It's about 200 milliliters of um, single cream, but we just used like whole cream, and that seems to work fine. So you're going to add the cream. It's really delicious. The butter really adds a flavor that I think the Wizarding World recipe is lacking. I mean, it is called butterbeer, and I think you're really missing that butter flavor in that recipe. And then once we add the cream, this is another unique part. You actually add about four to five Werther's Originals, which is really cool, because that also, like you have the cream soda, but once again, it's supposed to be really sweet, so this kind of adds a little caramel effect to it. These things take a little while to melt, but. All right, now once the Werther's Originals have melted, you can go ahead and turn off your burner. Make sure the whole time they're melting, you're continuously stirring, scraping the bottom and the edges, because otherwise the Werther's will stick and then they'll burn. Now for those muggles who are of age, 21 and up, you can add a couple shots of butterscotch schnapps, because there are also a couple references in the books that imply that the butterbeer is slightly alcoholic, especially for a house elf. So it's not much alcohol, but a little. And of course, it still tastes delicious even without it. So if you want to do it for your kids, so we'll do, go ahead. That was probably like a shot and a half, which for our purposes is fine. It is recommended that you serve it hot. You can either try to funnel it into the little um, bottles that you made. The only problem with that is then the ready whip kind of doesn't work out as well. But if you want it to be authentic, bottle is the way to go. Or you can use one of your souvenir mugs from the Wizarding World itself to make one. All right, now as you can see, it is piping hot. So if you want to serve it immediately, make sure you put a few ice cubes in the cup. Otherwise, you're going to have to let it sit, but continue to stir it as you go. Now, the recipe we're providing makes about four or five butterbeer mugs full, which is enough for a family for a night instead of hot cocoa. If you're doing a party, I'd recommend doing like doubling or tripling the recipe. We doubled it for ours. So once you put it in the mugs, you just got to add some whipped cream to the top which looks really festive, and then enjoy. Mmm, bloody brilliant.